point anytime soon to offer an endorsement or to weigh in on any of this back and forth. John? Jeff Zeleny live on the ground in South Carolina. It is an early moment, but an interesting moment in this Democratic primary. Let's bring it in the room. So the debate brings the front runner back to earth. That happens. Front runners get challenged. Every candidate stumbles. Whether you're Joe Biden, whether you're a lesser known candidate, every candidate stumbles. The question is, can you recover? Is saying sorry a couple weeks later enough? I think we'll have to see if it's enough, but you point out it's a couple of weeks later. I think the reason why he had to apologize is that in this political environment, in this news environment, this issue was still coming up where things usually just kind of fade away. And so he had to address this. I, I understand why he continues to really tie himself so closely to Obama. This has been helpful to him. I do wonder how far that will take him. He's the front runner right now, and it's still very early. But is, is it going to be enough to say, I was with Obama, I, that, you know, Obama's my best friend, and, <laughs> and so vote for me? Like, will that be enough to carry him? To, to that point, to that, to that point, just, just, just to that point, uh, look, he served as a loyal vice president for eight years. Uh, to a Democratic president who is still very popular, especially popular among mm -hmm. African-American voters mm -hmm. because he made history, of course. And so Joe Biden uh, name drops uh, a lot. Barack, when he got elected president, everything landed on his desk but locusts. <laughs> I'm serious. In Pennsylvania and Michigan and Wisconsin and Minnesota and Ohio and the places Barack and I won. As a United States senator and then as Barack's vice president, he gave me significant assignments in the area of foreign policy. I would immediately reinstate the limitations that Brock and I, Brock put in place, the president put in place. I mean, they, they know he was Barack Obama's vice president, right? <laughs> right. Um, you know, uh, does he need to keep doing that? Is there, is, I guess, is there a risk in, the, in overdoing it? Do people think, why do you need the, why do you need the cloak of, uh, of Barack Obama? Why can't you be your own man? Well, so far, his support among black voters has been fairly durable, despite these um, sort of little things that we've been covering as gaffes, at least. I think you have this very risk-adverse Democratic electorate. They want to beat Trump. That is first and foremost in their mind, and they want the least risky person to do it. And the problem for Joe Biden is if he starts looking riskier, if he keeps making these mistakes, if he um, has trouble managing them, if he looks you know, like he's maybe lost a step or, or whatever, um, then he becomes not the least risky candidate. He becomes a far riskier candidate. And at the same time, if other newer figures like a Kamala Harris can prove that they can do it and reassure some of these concerns that you hear a lot when you're out there talking and, to voters. And so to that point, the next set of debates, and we'll get to them in a minute, are three weeks away. Uh, and so if you're, another de if you're another Democrat, whoa, you say, whoa, Biden did stumble a little bit. He's a little shaky. Mm -hmm. Kamala Harris did have a moment. You're all thinking, what's mine? How do I get it? And the question is, if there's an opportunity, can she seize on it? She says, good apology, Mr. Vice President, but. Well, he says he's sorry. I'm going to take him at his word. But again, that doesn't address the issue of busing in America. And the fact that he still, you know, we have to, we cannot rewrite history. I mean, I think that, that he, is, um, he is right to, to recognize the impact of his words. And I applaud him for doing that and having the courage to do it. Um, there is still a point of disagreement between he and I, and um, that remains. So she wants to keep this conversation going. In some ways, it's about busing. It's about Biden sounding, to t seeming to talk favorably about working with segregationists. But to your point, isn't this really about, is Biden as strong as a debater as we thought? Is he tough enough to go get Trump? Are there holes in his record? And Harris or somebody else going to grow to the point where Democrats say, right. no, wait a minute. And, and, and look, so put aside the issue of race and busing, that, that's an issue as, an, uh -huh. uh, that the, the party in the country will talk about. But to Lisa's point on vis-a-vis on -vis Trump, people in these primaries close their eyes and imagine the, you know, somebody like Biden and they imagine him going up against Trump. And, and, and those kinds of situations where Trump says something if Biden were to be the nominee and attacks Biden, people imagine how would he respond? And, and what they saw play out over the last three weeks is an example of how he might respond in a stumbling way, not uh, apologizing right away, not cleaning up right away, letting multiple opportunities go by without really sort of seeming like he kind of knew what to do or what to say. And people imagine that that would be what it was like if he were to face Trump. And that's that's damaging. To him. And so we will see. And you mentioned, does he recover? Every, every candidate, no matter how good you are, makes mistakes. The question is, do you learn and recover?